Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking about the 1879S Morgan Silver Dollar, going over its values based off of what condition it's in, the history, and especially a lot of the unique history that pertains specifically to the 1879 San Francisco coin. We'll be going over any of the VAMs or varieties. There is a rare one for the state that you want to be looking for, and then we'll cover deep mirror proof likes, proof likes, and any mint errors. So full overview, let's get into the presentation. Let's get into the 1879S Morgan Silver Dollar. We'll start with just some context of the overall. Morgan Dollar had started in 1878 after the Bland-Allison Act, and that basically allowed free silver, which was an inflationary policy that would increase the amount of circulating dollars. Um, the silver prices had been falling, so the Treasury could make a profit coining a bunch of this silver into new dollars. And people were concerned on some political aisles, but there were a lot of allies, especially the silver rights who were located in the West that would stand to benefit a fair amount from this, as would some of the populist types, because, you know, these people might be farmers and there had been an unsaid deflationary policy since the Civil War that was putting downward pressure on wages. Um, so these were welcomed politically by some and opposed by people who were concerned about inflation, but the 1879S would have been right at the start of that. Um, eventually, that sort of wears off uh, until the 1890 Sherman Silver Purchase Act um, asks for a bunch more coin. Um, that sort of starts back up again, but people become concerned because you could go through a cycle where you'd get dollars that could buy gold, the gold could be exchanged for silver, and then the silver could be turned back into more dollars. And there was a cycle that was driving a lot of gold out of the United States. It was not great. Foreign investment was not too happy. Um, there was the Panic of 1893, and eventually, um, 1895, the economy recovers, but um, Congress orders some of the purchased silver um, to be coined out, so all of the Sherman silver material was used up uh, through 1904. Uh, it then disappeared for a long time, and then there was the Pittman Act in 1921, um, and that led to a bunch of new Morgan dollars and eventually a switch in design over to the piece. The key dates are shown, 1879S, so 1879 to 1883, the San Francisco Mint produces only silver dollars. Uh, there had been a lot of smaller denomination coins that had flooded back into the states uh, after disappearing in the Civil War kind of in 1877, and they really need to focus on these dollars, and the quality pr of production was really high. Um, that's different from the peace dollar production, uh, if you've been watching some of those videos I've been producing, and there was very little shortage of these coins. They're one of the most common in mint state, especially lower mint state grades, uh, and there were some rare ones. We'll get into the reverse of 1878 coins, but tons and tons of thousand coins bags would be released uh, throughout the 1900s up to 1964. So that essentially made it so that the values are as follows, where mint state 63 is like $100. Not much of a rarity uh, boost until you get the difference between mint state 65 and 66 doubles the value, doubles again to 67. And then uh, mint state 68 is a really nice $4,000 coin. There were 9.1 million made, which was one of the higher mintages for this era. And then we do have a little bit of information. Proof like is when you can see the reflection of a ruler two to four inches above the coin. Clearly, a uh, deep mirror proof like is six to eight. And then anything in between, uh, you sort of see if the uh, surfaces are super cameo and frosty looking as you'd see on the right but the value breakdown mint state 63 might have a 50 percent increase for a proof like and triple for a deep mirror proof like uh, and then similar um you know mint state 65 not a huge uh value premium for the proof like whereas for deep mirror proof likes people sure do pay up um, the reverse of 1878 is definitely something to discuss. It's easily seen with the naked eye because the flat-breasted uh, 1878 is going to be much different from the normal 1879s. About 1% 1 of mint state coins have the reverse of 1878, and a lot of that was released in the Redfield hoards, maybe three or 4,000 coins right there. Um, you can also tell in the fe feathers because um, the sort of pattern if you look if you compare the two the top um, feather in the arrow 
is going to be very small in the reverse of 1878, much larger in the 79. So these, you know, Mint State 63, it's like 16 times more expensive. Mint State 65, far more than that, and really accelerates in the higher conditions. So that's really something you should be looking for. Um, there's no other major VAMs for this series, but we do have some cool mint errors. So this is a partial collar strike sold for a bit more. It wasn't properly put in the striking chamber, um, was partially out of it, and you can sort of see the double rim uh, along the reverse. Um, more interesting is this uncentered broad strike. Uh, this coin did not have the retaining collars, so when it strikes, the metal sort of flows out from it, and it's not centered, so it's, uh, you know, that's part of it. Often the broad strike coins will just flow directly out here. It seems to have flown out, but in a specific direction, but that was a $3,800 find. And then this coin was a really nice, um, it passed through the upsetting mill a second time, likely after it was struck. That turns like the, just a lump of metal into a good planchet, so like a blank into a planchet, but it seems to have passed through that a second time. And this one sold for $8,225, really attractive looking coin and a very, very uncommon error. So those are the errors. Neat thing here with the reverse of 1878, look for it in any condition. And then we've got proof likes, you know, and just interesting context, um, you know, pretty common coin. Plenty were produced in San Francisco, and that's what we've got for today. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll, yeah, have fun seeing you there.